Kia ora, here are the last two questions from last year's differentiation paper for level 3 calculus. They're both excellent questions, but one is far more straightforward than the other. So I'd say the second of the two questions in here is the hardest question in last year's paper. So this is the first one, and this is not bad at all. We're told that y is equal to this expression here, and we're asked to show that dy by dx is equal to y times 1 minus cot x. We don't need to freak out about it, we just go ahead and differentiate. So there are two ways to do this problem. The first way was that to avoid doing a product rule, I decided that I'd write it like this. y equals e to the x times cosec x, which gives us, doing a really easy um, product rule, uh, dy by dx is the first e to the power of x times the derivative of the second and you shouldn't need to use your formula sheet if you're watching this video with excellence questions but there you go it's in the formula sheet if you need it plus the second cosec x times the derivative of the first which is just e to the power of x so what does that give me well I can take out a common factor of e to the x cosec x times negative cot x plus 1. Now it's a show that question, so we want to make sure that there are no leaps in logic, so that the mark is not sitting there going, oh yeah, this student just wrote down the answer and hoped for the best. So we'll do it properly, we get that. Now this is just y times 1 minus cot x as required. I'm going to do this using the product, the quotient rule on another slide just to show you another approach. Right, so here's the other way to go. So we've got y equals e to the x over sine x. So we can go straight to the quotient rule. So we're going to square the bottom line like that, pop that expression sine of x up the top, differentiate the numerator, which just gives us e to the x, minus the numerator, sometimes we call u, right? So that's e to the x times the derivative of the denominator. Now splitting that up, here's what I get next. I get e to the x over sine x, which we can spot straight away as y, minus e to the x cos x over sine squared x. Now I'm going to write this as sine x times sine x, because that's what it is. So that equals e to the x over sine x minus e to the x over sine x times cot x, that's a time sign, which is equal to e to the x over sine x times 1 minus cot x. Sorry about the background noise, last day of the school holidays here. y minus 1 minus cot x, there we go. And that is as required. Alright, now on to the trickier question. Um, that one was pretty straightforward. Okay, so there's a lot to read here. I hope you like rugby. In a rugby game, a try is scored 15 metres from the left-hand goalpost. The conversion kick is taken somewhere along the line, perpendicular to the goal line, from the point where the try was scored. So thank goodness they've given us a lovely diagram. The ball has to go between the goalposts, really. And the goalposts are 5.4 metres apart. So what we have to do is to figure out what is the optimal distance to make the angle between the lines from the ball to the goalposts as big as possible. In other words, we're trying to maximize theta, right? And theta is this angle in here, right? The bigger that angle, the easier it is going to, going to be to score a goal. Okay, so if we look at that for a minute, start trying to write down some things that you're going to use. Um, in particular, you should be able to immediately spot two 
right angled triangles um, and they're going to be the key to the problem. So draw out those right angled triangles and write down what you can with them. Okay, so the first right angle triangle has got alpha in it and it's got D here and it's got 15 metres here. Okay, and the second one, and it needs to have a right angle of course, this one here has got 15 plus 5.4, so that length there is 20.4. This is the same, so this is my kicking point. So there's the goal there. Now this angle in here is alpha plus theta. And we want to maximise theta. So let's do the obvious stuff with both of those and see where we get to. Well, we've got this side is the opposite and this side is the adjacent. It's meant to say O. So tan of alpha is equal to 15 over D. Here we've got tan of alpha plus theta is equal to 20.4 over D. So we're looking at that and we're going, how am I going to get an expression for theta? Because, because usually that's what we do. For example, if we if think back to like level two or something, suppose we want to maximize, um, suppose we have an area problem and we've got an expression for the area in terms of X. And we want to maximize the area. Well, we want to have an expression for the area. Here we want to maximize the angle theta. So our first thought, everything we've done so far, says, well, then we should find an expression for the angle theta. But it's not obvious how we should get to theta. Well, at least it's not obvious that that's going to be something we can solve. So we're just going to keep going for a bit and see where we get to. Now, when you look at that tan of alpha plus theta, that should jog your memory back to compound angle formulae from trig. And we're going to use that here. So if you need your formula sheet, go grab it. Hopefully you don't. But tan of theta plus plus alpha is equal to tan of the two separate angles added together. So tan theta plus tan alpha divided by 1 minus tan theta times tan alpha. So we're going to go a little bit further before we start doing any calculus. And we're going to work with this because we've got an expression for tan of alpha plus theta, and we've got an expression for tan of alpha. So hopefully that's going to get us something with theta in it. So I'm going to um, start a new slide to just clean this up a bit. Just have to put my right angle in there on the triangle. So make sure that you've followed everything I've done so far, because there's nothing hard yet. Um, there's just a couple of right angle triangles. Okay, so we've got tan of theta plus alpha is equal to tan theta plus tan of alpha over 1 minus tan theta tan alpha. We know from the first right angle triangle that this is equal to 20.4, right, so the, the goal side over D. And we also know that tan alpha is equal to 15 over D. So if we substitute in for those, the only unknown thing left in there is going to be tan theta. So that's what we're going to try next. We're going to get um, tan theta plus tan alpha. I'm going to do this very slowly. If you can see ways to speed this up, just forward the video a wee bit. Just make sure that your working is really clear though. So that's that, and we know that that's equal to 20.4 over D. Okay, so I've done this substitution. Now I'm going to substitute in my expression for tan alpha. So we get tan theta plus 15 over D over 1 minus tan theta times 15 over D equals 20.4 over D. 
Right, so we need to do some cleaning up. Uh, I'm going to cross multiply both sides. So here's what I'm going to get. D times tan theta plus 15 over D is equal to 20.4. Now I'm going to hit the side of my um, iPad app here. Sorry about that. So it's going to be times, big bracket, 1 minus 15 tan theta over D. Alright, so now um, expand that out and let's see what we get next. Okay, so here, left hand side, we've got D tan theta plus 15 equals 20.4 minus, right, 15 times 20.4, 306 divided by D tan theta. Cleaning that up, I haven't got theta, but I'm starting to see I've got tan theta. So I've got tan theta, collecting up all the terms with tan theta, I get D plus 306 over D, and that just equals 5.4, so that's looking quite nice. So tan theta is equal to this, 5.4 divided by, yuck, what a mess, got to fix this, D plus, oh, so I'll do this in one hit, D squared plus 306 over D, so we get down to this, tan theta is equal to 5.4 D over D squared plus 306. So we haven't done any calculus yet, but what we've got now, we haven't got theta, but we've got an expression for its tan. So there's two ways to go here. One is um, to kind of hammer it and get theta by doing tan inverse to both sides. That's not much use to us because we don't know how to differentiate the inverse tan function yet. It's actually quite easy, but it's just not taught until first year uni maths. So we're not going to do that, we're going to do something else instead. So we've got tan theta equals 5.4d over d squared plus 306. Okay, so the path that we're not going to take is this. Theta equals tan inverse of that thing, and then doing d theta by dd. Right, so we're not doing that. Um, if you want to know how to do that, come, come and ask me or your maths teacher. What we're going to do instead is to think about what I'm trying to do. Well, I'm trying to maximise theta, but I know something about tan theta. Tan theta is, looks like this. Right, so if I'm going to maximise theta, my angle is going to be between 0 and 90 degrees. So to maximise tan theta is the same as to maximize theta. So all I have to do here is instead of maximizing theta directly, I just have to maximize tan theta. Now if you find that really weird, just think about, suppose we take an easier function instead of working with a trig function. If I've got y equals 2x and I'm trying to figure out how to maximize x. Well, it'll be the same place that I'm maximizing y because the link here is um, it's what we call monotonic. In other words, when x goes up, y goes up. So it's the same thing here. When theta goes up, um, tan theta goes up. So here, I've talked about in here that the angle is going to be between 0 and 90. Um, and that's because over one cycle of the tan function, when theta goes up, tan theta also goes up. Right, so all I've got to do is to think about tan theta as y. So y is equal to tan theta. So if I'm maximizing that, I'm going to do dy by dd, and I'm going to make that equal to zero because I'm finding a stationary point. Okay, so believe it or not, I think this is actually the easiest way to do this problem. Um, and it's how the assessment schedule's got it set out, although it's pretty brief and it's slightly different. So what have I got now? Well, I've got a really straightforward quotient rule expression that I'm going to maximise. I'll do that on the last slide. I promise that we're nearly at the end. So we've got y is equal to 5.4d over 
d squared plus 306. So dy by dd is equal to, square the bottom line, this one you really can't get away from the quotient rule. So write that up the top, d squared plus 306 times the derivative of the top line, 5.4, minus, differentiate the bottom line, 2d times 5.4d in the top line. Now it looks terrible, but all we've got to care about is the numerator because we're setting that equal to zero. So equals zero when, when what happens? Well, we've got 5.4d squared, oh, well, I'm not even going to bother to multiply out the 5.4s because um, we can see we've got a common factor in here of 5.4. So 0 equals all of that. So knock out the 5.4s. So 0 equals 0.something weird's happened there. Uh, negative, that's right, d squared minus d, 2d squared, negative d squared plus 306. Okay, so for a maximum, that's what we need. And then d is equal to the square root of 306. Um, officially, of course, it's the positive or negative, but distance has got to be a positive amount. So we're going to get d is equal to 17.5 metres. Okay, and if you think back to your goalposts and so on, let's just take a wee look at that. Does that answer make sense? Well, yep, it does. So that's 15 metres there. There's my 5.4 there, and there's my 17.5 metres there, and that's my little right angle. So there are other ways to do this problem, and if you're interested, or especially if you're doing scholarship calc, you might want to just Google um, rugby posts calculus problem, and you'll get quite a few cool answers coming up and some of them use trig without calc and that's another approach but in this paper because it's the differentiation exam you must use calculus to solve the problem okay thank you very much for watching to the end if anyone's still here and if you want to talk about that problem um, send me an email or come and see me